Hello and welcome to another episode of Boxing TV. We bring the fighters to the fans. Coming up on today's show, Alan the Savage Babbage. Stay tuned. A massive welcome to my next guest and someone who... <laughs> <laughs> You're so scary looking, Mr. Savage. Why are you so scary looking? The Savage himself, Mr. Alan Babich, one of heavyweight boxing and boxing's um, most exciting prospects. <laughs> Alan, how are you doing? You well, mate? Thank you, brother. It's not Alan, it's the Savage. You know, so we have the privilege to talk to the Savage because he just comes and goes, and I don't know when, because he just chooses his own time. So He's like a he's ghost. Now in the yeah, he's now you know in a fuck you mode, so I'm sorry in advance for for cursing and stuff, you know, because he doesn't really care about this stuff, you know. That's fine with me, absolutely fine with me. Um, I will say I'm I'm so excited about you and really to to speak to you first because you've got such a brilliant story. Now I've seen you on the TV over in the UK, especially. You know, we've we've seen how devastating you are um, in the ring, but. It, I didn't know anything about your story until today. And I looked through what you've been through and you've completely rewritten what your life could have been, if that makes sense. And it's honestly good on you, really, really good on you. Now, I want to start right from the very, very beginning, Alan. You know, what, what got you into boxing in the first place? Well, listen, uh, for the beginning, I had a, I was a, uh... I was kind of uh, uh, I was kind of bullied in the school, you know. I was I was bullied a lot, and that kind of pushed me into something, doing something because I was really in a bad place. You know, I was a bad place. I was bullied go every day, and I hate the school. You know? First to eighth yeah. grade, it was it was a pure hell for me. You know? I don't like to remember those things, and I just went off from school doing stuff you do, you know, the, the lousy jobs and stuff. And I just didn't see myself nowhere, nowhere. I was nowhere to be. I didn't have a persona. I didn't have nothing. And then I found my sanctuary in boxing. You know, it, okay. it was like I was good at it. I could punch a guy in the face, you know, and not go to prison and stuff. <laughs> I was kind of, I was, I was a bit uh, a troublemaker, you know, because all that kind of life, we just, we, I, I was raised up poor, you know. We didn't have even electricity most of the time, you know. So I was really, really? a poor kid. And I was a little fat kid with pimples and poor, you know, and that would good with the ladies and stuff. So it was a shit, shit growing up, you know, and I wanted something better for my life. And I said, I'm going to sell my soul to the devil if somebody saved me. I'm going to sell my soul. I was ready for to do that. And I was really ready. And then I met boxing again. I, I'm, I'm reading about Mark Marciano's son Listons, you know, all of those guys who, who were saved by the boxing. And then I started going that way you know and then it was like i trained for 10 years and it, it it wasn't a good good it wasn't a good life you know it was just getting beaten and being broke all the time so yeah. then i met Dillian, and my whole life just shifted bro it's crazy everybody wants to hear my story now that's the best part of it that's cool because nobody cared before nobody cared you no know, you you're poor and nobody cares about you. That, that's the toughest part yeah. if i could say oh look i'm poor i have a tough life nobody cares yeah. You gotta do something, bro. Everybody who is in that situation, just try it. You have nothing to yeah. lose. You know, I lost really a million times. On the, on the million and one times I succeeded. So, you know, it's, it's a crazy story. Yeah. It's an inspirational story, and it's something that I can't wait for the fans to, to hear. But kind of rewinding just a little bit, and we will get on to, to the you, your meeting with Dillian White and, you know, kind of your career at the moment. But uh, tell us tell us a little bit kind of about where you, you grew up. Um, uh, was it in Croatia? I mean, wh where did you grow up? Yeah, it's, it was Croatia. You know, it was a beautiful town of Rovin. It was a coastal town, you know. So only thing you can be in Rovin is a waiter, you know. And, and I'm a shit waiter, you know. I, I was a waiter at 16 <laughs> years. I was working already. And I broke every single glass I was given. You know? Oh, God. I was really a shitty waiter. So, And I was like, what am I going to do with this town? It's a beautiful town. The most beautiful town in the whole world. But you can do nothing there if you're not rich. You know? right. If you come from a normal family, you know, middle class or poor, you, there's no, nothing. There. I wasn't good in school also. I was just fighting all the time. I was a troubling kid, you know. So I just needed something. You know? I needed the American dream, you know. Yeah. And I just keep reading about Joe Louis, about Mark Marcel. I know the, those stories 
all Marvin Hagler, you know, everybody, everybody back then, and even right now. So I just needed something. And I said, I said it so many times, I would sell my soul to who, anybody who wants it for this dream. Yeah. And I really think I did. I, I think I did so much because the savage gets too powerful sometimes, you know, and I have no control of what he says. I have no control of what he says. I have no control of what he does sometimes. Yeah. I'm still strong. Alan is also a very strong guy, you know, and I can manage savage, but sometimes I just slip and the slips keep getting uh, <laughs> larger and larger. So I hope I'm going to do enough so I can retire without getting totally insane. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. So you speak about the, the Savage character as, as almost kind of an alias, almost like a another character of Alan the Savage Babbage. Uh, tell me more about that. That's really interesting to me. Is this, this something that you like to, you know, kind of a, almost a character that you, you, you turn on and, and everything changes? Yeah, it's it's my alter ego, you know. It's it's a very known fact, alter ego. It's a very known study. It's a studied field. Every, people have alter egos. You know, Tom Cruise has alter ego. And I don't. Denzel Washington said he had it also. A lot of guys have it because that is like a, a getaway plan, you know. When Alan gets stuff, because I'm just a guy from a small town, I can't talk to any like like the way I talk to you know. I can't talk yeah. to Shandell Winters to Dylan White the way I talk to. I can't because Alan is just a normal guy. From a little coast town of Croatia, so I needed something bigger. You know, I needed something and a mask. Savage is nothing but a mask for me. I just put on the savage persona, yeah. and I can fuck everybody up. You know, I just don't care. And in same in yeah. the ring, I can't walk in that matchroom ring like an Allen. I, I would lose. You know, I have all, all the power is drained. Yeah. So I just deal. Just let the savage deal do it, and it works. You know, it works, guys. Whoever wanted can try it. You know, just imagine something yeah. and believe in it so hard it's going to become reality. You know? It reminds Simple. me of like Popeye, you know, kind of eats a bit of spinach and then he turns into a superhuman. And it reminds me, yeah. you remind me of so much of Mike Tyson. So much. Yeah. And, and I, I watch a lot of Mike Tyson, so that, that's why, because I, yeah. I also imitate him sometimes, yeah. Not even just your style either. Obviously, you're, the, you're a shorter heavyweight, so you're a come forward fighter. Yeah, there's there's that correlation. But more on like the, the kind of the emotional side, how, you know, you can kind of turn like, like, like he does. Do you think maybe you said about being bullied, didn't you? Um, at school and, and things like that. Do you think that that yeah. might kind of have a role to play in needing this persona now to think, no, if I'm the savage, ain't no bully, ain't no fighter going to come anywhere near me. Do you think that might have something to do with it? Yeah, of course, it had everything to do with it. You know? Because if you are raised up good and rich and stuff, you can't be a boxer. You know, you see all these champions, they're all poor kids, they're all troubling kids, you know. They all went to prison, they have uh, children when they're like 15 years old and stuff. So it, they're all troubling kids, you know. So you need that kind of life. And it's so much easier because... Me just being here in Metro event, I live in Madrid. Yeah. And those guys come here, they say, oh, this hotel is shit. No, bro, it's not shit. This, this is a dream. And I can't I can't explain those guys because they, they can't feel it. Yeah. It's better for them at home. I still live in a shitty apartment. I don't want to go to the bedroom <laughs> because I can't wait to go to the Metro event. And then I'm in a hotel. Oh, look at me. I'm all, you know, everybody yeah. talk to me and stuff. So it's, it's a different kind of... Uh, upbringing you know it's a different kind of mentality you can't you can't yeah. make that you gotta you gotta go through it you, know? you gotta make that I, I, I completely get what you're saying i mean marvin hagler bless his soul said you know it was a lot harder to get up in the morning in silk pajamas um which uh, you know i can see that see why you're doing what you're doing definitely definitely so you yeah. went to be a waiter Obviously a shocking waiter, Alan, <laughs> by the sounds of it. Um, and then you went on to be a doorman, didn't you, in, in the likes of the, the clubs and things like that. Now, I read an, an article where you said that, you know, it was quite violent and, you know, the people were different in, in Croatia than, than other places. Could you, could you explain that for me a little bit more about kind of the things you had to come up against? Yeah, well, listen, it's a, Croatia is a very tough country. You know, it's a very tough country and I love it for it because it's the most beautiful country. And it's very tough. If you can make it from Croatia, you can make it anywhere in the world. And I, and I'm the living example of it. You know, I went to uh, Canada to spar with Art Bartebiev. I can't, I went to spar with Ajikabel. I went to UK many times and it's so much easier. 
You know, you guys, <laughs> you, UK has fans. You guys are fans, you know. There's some guys who want me to punch them in the face, how much they, they like me. So in Croatia, we don't have that. We have yeah. only people who love you and who doesn't love you. And f- people who doesn't love you are going to punch you in the fucking face. You know, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> there is not that, that much respect, you know, because if you succeed in Croatia, that is the, the horror for them. They don't like you. So Croatia is also beautiful yeah. and terrible and amazing and not good. So, you know, it's a very good mix, but it's a very, very hard upright. Like we like we talked to, you're going to be bullied a lot. You no, know, you're not going to yeah. get a job. You're going to work for every, well, I mean, uh, average pay in Croatia is like what, like 400 pounds. Yeah, what you yeah. gonna do with that? Well, I had a fail. How would you live with that, Alan? I mean, it's. I do, I do. I I did the uh, nights in the most, most most terrible of uh, clubs whole night for like let me calculate for like thirty five pounds whole night really? of bouncing, bro. So that's that's low, Mate. like thirty five, thirty six pounds. Yeah, whole night and every and I do it and I have only two nights per week because if you want more, you gotta work more. But I I, I had to train. So I yeah. did only weekends, okay. and from that little pay, you know, I buy myself some Brazilian chicken, some cheap Brazilian chicken, and eat only that. What can you do? You know. Yeah. So I was um, not well fed. I was I was malnourished. <laughs> it's a dangerous job at the best of times, you know. Kind of, you know, being on the door. But I mean, uh, did you have any occurrence where you know we? Have, I mean, I hear it all the time. You know, where people kind of pulling knives or pulling guns or you know groups of people beating one bouncer up. And did you have any kind of ever have any experience with anything like that? Of course, I was attacked by a knife, you know, and uh, I was I was looking for a gunman because one one time I was working this club. It's very very sick club and. Uh, the owner comes and said, yo, yo, Babbage, somebody is uh, winking a gun inside. Go find him. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing for 20 pounds? I got to go <laughs> what? and find Sorry, James guy. Bond. <laughs> yeah, I got to go and find the guy who is wiggling his fucking gun around for 30 pounds. And I said, like, oh, fuck, I want to fucking kill him. And I went in and... Uh, Fortunately, I didn't find him because someone would be dead. He was me of him. <laughs> you know, because I was like, God, well, what have my life become? And they don't give you even food in Croatia. Nobody cares if you're hungry, bro. Yeah. Even a dog, you give him food and water. We didn't have even that. So it, it was very, very hard. Very, very hard work. And merciless. Because if you don't earn money, you're going to be hungry. There's no question about it. Yeah. You know, there's, not, there's no second exit. And I, I train two times every day. So I, I could work only two two nights per week. So I get maybe sixty pounds per week to for everything, for the gas, for the food. Oh God. Food. Yeah. It's very fucking expensive, you know. So and it's a very, very a hard job. country. Do you know what I mean? How, how hard it'd be if someone hasn't got a job and they've got kids and you know, that must have been yeah. it must be really, really, really hard. And obviously, you know, just like many, many other fighters throughout their lives who have been on the show, you just countless amounts of fighters. Um, who've had kind of had their brushes or their let's say their uh, experiences just about to get them in in, in the life of crime. Um, how close because that obviously go hand in hand really, but how close were you to being involved in, you know, let's say more sinister um, you kind of not opportunities, it's the wrong word, but how, yeah, it's the right word. Yeah. It's the right word. Yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah, I, was, I was in it, you know, I was in it because that's the only way you can eat. Because I was never a good at those things because I like people too much, you know. I can't take money from somebody who has a who has a kids who has no, you know, those stuff like that, yeah, you know, yeah. because I could have done that. I could have got because there's a lot of those things in Croatia, in, in England also, but in Croatia. We are known for that kind of things, and uh, I was in that circles, and I saw that it, it's it's pure hell. Yeah. You no, know, I, I I never did it. I, I was without money rather than doing that. You know, but I could yeah. have done it, and I saw a lot of those things, you know, and it just upsets me. You know, I could never do it. How can you take money from somebody who yeah. has kids and stuff? And he borrows money so he can feed the kids. He didn't yeah. borrow it for the fucking. Uh, I don't know, casino yeah. or something. So I can beat the guys the... like that. No yeah. problem. If you need money for gambling, I'm going to beat you up. I don't fucking care. Yeah, yeah. But if you be, if you take money to buy diapers for a baby, I, yeah. co- I couldn't do it. And I just said, guys, I'm sorry, I'm out. No, I was bold. I was bold and big and strong. Yeah. So they took me in and I said, I can't do it, bro. Yeah. I can't do it. No. So I saw that life. And it's very, it's very hard and unforgiving life. And all of those guys are now in jail. All my yeah. friends... 
half of my friends are now in jail. And I said, no, I don't want that money. I'm going to go my way. And they laughed at me. Everybody would. They yeah. get like, I don't know, thousand pounds and I get 10 pounds. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, but, but you but could have been there, Alan, mate. You could have been there. Yeah, you I never, I never done been those there. things, and I was always at peace with myself. And I know I'm yeah. a good man because of it, you know. So yeah, you are a good man. And that's that's one. Of the reason we do this show, Alan, is to bring the fighter from behind the gloves and and learn more about them. And you know, we over here, we like I say we've seen so much of you, especially in the UK, but we don't know your story, and that's the reason why I wanted to to do this now. I read something earlier on that you, you know, for, from this dream of, of trying to be a good person, you left your home with 30 euros, 30 euros in your pocket. That's yeah, it. Yeah, exactly so 30 euros. Yeah. 200 uh, kuna, yeah. How did, how did you, you go from that to where you are now? Yeah, but listen, I was, I was really at the crossroad in my life because I was already 18 years old. And th that is old in Croatia. You know, It's not like here, like, oh, he's young. No, you're old, bro. You, you need to bring money to your home. You, know? you need to give money. Your mom and I have a little sister. And my father wasn't really with us. You know, He didn't live with us and stuff. And I actually beat my father. You know? He ended up in the hospital. So it was, uh, you know, those kind wow. of situations. And you beat your own yeah, dad up. Yeah, I changed MMA that day, that uh, days, and uh, one time I get he, he was a drinker, you know. Right. He's a he's a cool now, but we don't have a we don't have a connection. But he calls me every now and again, and he's proud of me and stuff. So one time I get home, I was I think seventeen or eighteen. I think I was eighteen because I worked as a as a uh, I I was I was not a bouncer. I was a lower how do you say security guard, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Watching the fucking forest. I was watching the forest i don't know how the hotel around yeah. the hotel i walked around the hotel you know okay and i came home and my dad was drunk and yelling at my mom you know i love my mom more than i love myself oh, bless you. and that was just the, the the tipping point i just went mad you know I, i'm gonna fucking beat you right now and he's like you're not gonna do nothing my dad is bigger than me and i came to him i said please don't do that i'm gonna fucking beat you up and he punches me full full force with a head in my fucking nose he breaks my nose for the first time in my life. Yeah. You know, and all the blood came and my eyes were like this. And then we had a we had a fucking fight. You know, I, I was yeah. MMA then, so I did the elbows. You know, it was a very bad. You know, that doesn't. And sound the blood fun. was all yeah. over. The blood was all over the place. And my mother just took my little sister. My sister was 13 years old, and she was a shock for the whole life. And I said to my mom, "Just go in the other room. You know, I gotta yeah. take care of this because he was drunk and." Uh, my mother went to the other room and we had a fucking fist fight, me and my brother, you know. You know, so it is what it is. And the police came after half an hour and all of the floor was covered in my blood. You know, it was because I didn't punch him in the face. But I tried not to, but I did. I did punch him in the face. I tried not to, you know, but he destroyed my face. You know? It was yeah. crazy. You know? So it was a it was a shock, you know. And that was the wake up call. That I said, What am I doing, bro? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I told my father he can never return home. If he returns home, I'm going to do something even worse than beating him. Yeah. You know, and he, he went away that day. He never returned home. You know, we are good now. We talk, but he still okay. can't go home. No, nowhere near my mother. You know, so after that, I said, my mother, listen, I'm the, I'm the man of the house right now. You know, we don't have a father anymore. We don't have a, you don't have a husband. So I got to be the man in the house. My, my sister is 13 years old. And I went on, she gave me 200 kura, 30 euros. Yeah. And I went on to a bigger city, you know, just, just like that. I just yeah. went off and searched for a job. And I go into the first security kind of, you know, building. Yeah. And I was there and I was like, listen, I heard, I heard you were hiring. I didn't hear that. I just said, and I want to be a bouncer. You know, what, what can I do? I had like 18 years. I don't really remember the year. It was 18, 19. Yeah. Maybe 19. I don't remember. It was 10 years ago, 15. Okay. So I I heard you need a guy, and they were like, do you know how to fight? I said, yeah. Yeah, I beat my own dad. <laughs> <laughs> look at the blood on my face, of, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, you look at my face, I'm fucked up. I, I changed MMA at the time. I was yeah. even the national champion in MMA. I was always good at fighting. Yeah. And they were like, okay, we're going to try you on. And then I went into the, into the all of those, you know, bad people connections yeah and, uh, i saw a lot of things that i i saw a brutal beating so you know i just didn't like it i didn't like it when you punch somebody even if he is to blame but 
I didn't like it. Not so too far. That's how my that, that is where my ten years of struggle begin. You know, because yeah. I sent most of my money home, so I had nothing. I, I only had the pizza, my sad pizza, which is like two thousand and six years. You know, it's it's a two thousand six. Uh, it's made, so it's an old car. I still have it, and I slept in that car for half of those days. You know, really, <laughs> I was there Whoa. for like yeah for two years trying to make a name for myself. I slept in my car for one year. I oh, didn't wow. have anything to say because I would take apartment. I wouldn't have any money for it, you know, and then I would just go and sleep. I would uh, argue with, with those kind of ladies, you know, who yeah. has apartment. I would never do something like that. I just said, okay, I have somewhere to go. And then I would sleep in my car and I would work in a suit, you know, in a, in a casinos. I would wow. work, work in a suit, but I would sleep in my car. Wow. <laughs> it just shows Alan, um, you know that you know and to all the reason yeah. we do this as well is to inspire you know fighters coming through that anything is possible you know and you know that, it just shows that if you keep working hard for something that you love that there's always that it's chance even, yeah yeah but when you say it's working hard it, that's kind of trashy you know it's not even working hard it's when life puts you in a situation like that yeah. you can only be a bum or you can be successful there's no middle of it so when a life puts you in a situation like that, you got to fucking fight. It's your obligation to fight. Yeah. You don't need to work hard. You must work hard. You got to feed your mom. You got to feed your sister. You got to do something for other people. Don't look at yourself. I haven't eaten for three days, you know, back then. I, I didn't eat. I just give all the money to my sister and my mom. And I said, oh, I'm not hungry. You know, you got to do that. Wow. You got to be the man of the house. You know, so it's not something you choose. No, I, don't, I didn't choose that life. Yeah. yeah, I hated my life. I hated my life until two years ago when I met Dillian. I hated my life. Bro. No, I, I never liked my life because I had a lot of the girls, you know, the, the bouncers and stuff. I had a lot of dirty girls yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I really didn't like my life I because I, I hate going out. I hate clubbing. And yeah. I was there every week. I was there every week. <laughs> and you were hell. Was, <laughs> I it see. Was hell. It was a hell for me. And yeah. uh, it came to that point. Where I couldn't even look at people anymore who drink, who do drugs. Yeah, you know, I I was I was working at uh, those those bars, and you need to uh, be at the watch while while someone do drugs. You know, I don't like those guys. Yeah. Fuck them, and I gotta work for them. Yeah. Bro, they're all drugged up junkies, and they're telling me stand here, stand here, fuck you. you no, know, I, I, I can't <laughs> yeah. say that. Who are you to tell me what to do when you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you completely. I mean, it's. Uh, my my days are clubbing along behind me. I couldn't think of anything worse than than doing that these days. But you leads perfectly, really, onto my next question, Alan. Uh, that you then met Dillian, uh, Dillian White, who who brought you to to spar with him. How have you gone from having thirty euros in your pocket, going to do security again, blood all over your face from beating your dad up? And then Dillian White rings you. I mean, it's a it's a bit random that. And I mean, how did he even know about you? Yeah, because while I was doing all of those things that you just said, I was always boxing. Two days, two two times a day, I was always boxing. So if you want that, there is a way. You know, I did a lot mm. of bad things, a lot of good things, a lot of things. I did twelve hour shifts mostly, most uh -huh. of the time in a casino with no fucking windows. So it was a very wow. tiring job, but I still did two trainings a day. You know, just do it, bro. Just do it. Go. You can always, you're not going to die. Yeah. I had that in my mind. I want to die. So they say I died because I tried something, you know, that, that was in my mind. You know, I didn't, I didn't take a step back. Yeah. I wanted to go further. When I went tired, I go to train. They knocked me out. I go to train again. They yeah. break my nose. I go to train again. And I just said, let's go. Uh, fuck you. you know, whoever is up there, fuck you. I'm going to die doing this. No, I don't yeah. fucking care. And that's the way I trained all the time. So I was 10 years inside. The, and I was one fight away from the Olympics at Rio. Yeah. I was national champions a uh, few times. I was in the European Championship. I was good at boxing. Yeah. I had about 80 bouts. So people heard about me. They, yeah. they know there's some crazy guy. Some crazy bold guy who is beating everybody up yeah. because nobody had an easy fight with me. Nobody. They did beat me, you know, the punch of the tickers, you know, the yeah, big yeah, the boxes, stuff. Yeah. They beat me, but they remember me fighting. They remember fighting me. And then I got a chance to spar Ajit Kabail, you know. Yeah, great. He's fun. a European uh, champion. German, and he yeah. called me first. Uh, before him, it was Arthur Batebiev, actually, because my coach knew his coach. And I went to spar Batebiev. 
and it was a tough spar because but to be a tell everybody oh this is a tough guy you know and then Ajit Kabel's coach heard about me he called me and I beat Ajit Kabel up on the sparring and then okay. some guy was there who saw me beat him up and uh, Dillian called that guy that he needs a sparring oh see and okay. that guy tells him wow. I know this one guy I'm gonna try to reach him and then he reached to my coach and my coach said you want to go spar Dillian and I was at my lowest. I was at my lowest, you know. I was about to leave boxing because I did it for ten years already, and nothing happened. I was just bruised up, fucked up. My I had like two hundred stitches on my eyes. You don't uh, see it, but I had. Yeah, I, can say, I had yeah. more than two hundred, more than two hundred stitches all the time, and my nose was broken. For, I had four operations, four surgeries on my nose. Wow! Uh, my old bone is broken. My jaw uh, snapped twice. I had two, two stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it's this side. Up, up. So I had I had nothing, you know. I had I had boxing, I had nothing, and I was about to leave boxing. And Dillian called me, and he was like, "Come to spar, I'm gonna give you, I think, 500 euros a week." And I was like, "Bro, I never, I never saw this kind of money." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Let's go!" And my coach is like, "But you were like 86 kilos. I was underfed. I, yeah. I looked like a, I like I've been to Logor, like I've been to Auschwitz. Fuck, you look like." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm gonna put oh. on a few a few shirts so I look bigger." Okay. And I went off. I had I had all my I cleaned all my uh, balance on my uh, bank, and I took the, those twenty pounds. <laughs> you know, when I changed it in your money, it was paid twenty pounds. And yeah. no, I came no to Dylan White, and the other day, the, I came uh, the other day we sparred, and it was the most beautiful spar. I gave it all. I almost died. You know, <laughs> yeah. he was. He, he looked. At, he said, "This is a guy who's willing to die for this." I was like, yeah, I'm not going to stop. You can punch me in the head all the way you want. Like Rocky Marciano. I thought I was a Rocky Marciano. And he awesome. really liked the spar. And I shook him up for the first time. He was like, bro, you have you have steel in your fist. Yeah. So I know, no, no. Don't talk to me what I have. I know what I have. And he liked my attitude, you know. Mm-hmm. And he said, the first day, first or second day, he said, I'm going to manage you. And I was like, what the fuck are you going to manage me? I'm not even a heavyweight. Yeah. I'm not even a pro boxer. He was like, yeah, I got you a fight on my undercut. And I was like, Dillian, I'm not even a boxer. I'm a cruiserweight amateur. Yeah. And he was like, oh, fuck, what are you going to do now? <laughs> I will only get you a fight. I was like, I got to fly home to get my license, you know. Uh-huh. And I drank like six gallons of water, six liters of water to get my my weight up so I can go into heavyweights, you know. And no way. I went home. I make uh, those licenses in one day. I, I come back to, uh, uh, to 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 London, and then I had to do one fight outside UK because you can't do debut in UK if you're not from UK. You know uh-huh, that. Uh-huh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I, I then he flew me to Rome, and I thought it's gonna be a small fight. It was a bedroom show. When I came there, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I thought it was just gonna be some random guy yeah, in yeah. some random team. It was a bedroom show, and I was like, "Bro, this is fucking big." Yeah. And then after seven days, I boxed other fight. And I, I won both of them fight by knockout in first round. You know? Wow. And that's, that's when the story so cool. is. That, that is when I, I came home after the that fight. I get goosebumps right now. I get home after that Bless fight. You. And I was like, God, that's it. That's it. You know, that's it. That's it. You know? wow. And then a whole different life. From then on, I, I'm a good guy. You know, <laughs> I wasn't that's a good so guy cool. before. It's awesome to see. He's almost like exploded onto the scene, and I didn't realize it was that kind of sudden. And that's really cool that we that we can share that with with all the followers. So you said there about kind of your size and drinking loads of water to be happy, and she's really cool. It reminds me back in the amateurs when people used to put things in the socks so they can go <laughs> in a division and yeah, wait. wait and yeah. yeah, I did it all. I did it all. <laughs> so. Obviously, we are you are in a division where you've got some giants in the sport, the likes of Tyson Fury and Joshua, and you know even Deontay Wilder, some really big guys. How do you feel you you'll fare against the you know the the real giants of the division? Well, I'm going to answer you the best way. I just part Joe Joyce fourteen rounds, so the case okay. closed. <laughs> you know, case but he's the biggest of them all. He's the strongest of them all. Yeah, and I fought Dillian. Around hundred rounds, hundred okay. rounds of heavy sparring. Well, Joe Mine Joyce has got an like a bowling ball, though, hasn't he? So if you can, do... me and Dillian, me and Dillian has the best sparring in the world. Everybody yeah. says, everybody who saw it said that's it. And I fought Joyce for the fifteen rounds in two days. 
and I fought Cabello for a small amount of rounds, and then right. he quit. So I fought I fought my guy Marco Milner, who is now sparring Anthony Joshua, uh -huh. right now as we speak. He spars uh, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah. He sparred yesterday. He spars tomorrow. I spar with him every day. You know, wow. so I am a, I am really a heavyweight, but right. it's weird to explain. You saw Chambers. He was a big. He was yeah. a big cruiser. I was much bigger. I was just. He was nowhere near my punching power, and he's yeah. a. Big punching cruiser. He has like ninety percent KO ratio. So I think I answered a lot of questions by that. You know, I don't need to explain yeah. myself no more. You know? No, it's it's just great to see you've got this such belief. Do you know what I mean? But God, you God, you can put it to bed with that, can't you? I've done fifty rounds or whatever with Joe Joyce. I mean, you don't get much bigger, do you? That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. I just say that, and, and the real people will understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Joe Joyce is a fucking menace, you know. Yeah. And if you yeah. can go forty rounds with him, you have my respect. That's yeah. a hard thing to be. Tough man, big big man. So uh, one thing I actually wanted to ask you myself, really more than anything else, and um, as far as your countrymen. Um, another, you know, big prospect on the scene from Croatia is Filip Hergovic. Now, I, I believe you, you're not too fond of him from some of the way, <laughs> and that's being quite no, polite. What's the I'm deal? Not, not what, what, why? What's going on? What's up? Because I, I invented Savage for guys like that, you know. He's all, oh, look at me, I'm good and you're not. He never lifts up people. He only pulls them down. He pulls down everybody around them. My coach made him. My coach made him. My coach took him when he was 13 years old. He couldn't even walk. He walked funny. He was not good for boxing. And my coach made him into Olympian. And then he, he turned his back on him, you know, and he talked shit about me and my team and my right. coach. And I'm going to I'm gonna give everything I ever had to knock the, his fucking teeth in his fucking throat inside of Croatia. You know, I want to bring Matchroom yeah. to Croatia. That's why the Savage was born. The Savage has a purpose. So I don't want that fight now because when I beat that fucking idiot, I may Savage may be gone. No, so it's it's a very it's a very high risk for me. Yeah. But I would do it for my country because he's a he's a very very he's a bully. You know, he had a he's a silver spoon guy. How do you say he's a silver spoon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind totally of been given all the. And he doesn't respect. Yeah. He doesn't respect nobody. He doesn't respect me. He doesn't respect nobody. Only him. You look at me. He didn't beat nobody. He's a he's a cunt, and I'm gonna deal with him. I'm gonna deal with him inside of our stadium in Rovin. Everybody wants to fight. All of Croatia wants to yes, fight, and Croatia are crazy. So there is no better public, uh, uh, no better fans than Croatian fans when the, when it comes to fight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make an offer to Eddie Hearn at the end of this match, offer that he can't refuse. You know, That's I'm gonna fight so cool. that idiot for free. I'm gonna fight him only for the legacy. You know, I'm gonna take everything he's got. The fucking idiot, and I fucking hate him. They say he's the boogeyman. He's the shittiest boogeyman I ever saw in my life. How can he be a boogeyman? How can he be a boogeyman? He can't even look me in the eyes. I'll fucking rip his throat out if he look me in the street. Oh, fuck you, you know, he's not a boogeyman, bro. He's a, he's a sissy man. <laughs> I'm fucking sissy man. Oh, fuck you, you know. Yeah, I, I, I... <laughs> No, well, uh, I'm glad I asked that question. That's for sure. Yeah, fair. I mean, that'd be huge, wouldn't it? I mean, you against Hergovic would be a hell of a fight. So, you know, fingers. Let, come on, Eddie. Let, let's see that fight. Let's see that fight. Well, it's, it's the battle of the styles. It's Muhammad Ali Joe Fraser. You know, yeah. I'm good. I'm much smaller than him. And he's like, oh, my big, you're, you're fucking nothing. Bro. I'm gonna. This is a fight. Yeah. When, uh, listen, the amateurs. I wouldn't stand a chance. I wouldn't stand a chance with those big gloves, with those fucking judges. Cutting the fight or no, no. But in pros, bro, that's a fucking fist fight with the gloves. I yeah. can do everything to you. <laughs> I can legally, I can legally put you away, bro. You know, don't uh -huh. talk to me because this is my fight. The pro game is my game. You know, you have the amateurs. You're an Olympic medalist. Fuck you. You have that. You're a better amateur, but you're not a better professional. That's mm -hmm. a fucking fist fight. Anybody who was in the match, no, the judge doesn't even look at you. Bro, I was I was knocking Chambers out. He was knocked out clean. Judge didn't want to stop it. It's a brutal game. It's a brutal game. If yeah. I get him only once, I'm not going to stop until he's done. No, until the, awesome. four judges will have to enter the ring. Four judges will need to, to, to return the surge from his flesh, you know? I'm going to say something now that I think will stick with you for a, for a long time. And uh, Have you ever seen the film 300? 
Of course. <laughs> you <laughs> look just like one. Of, you look like one of these Spartans. And, th- and it's just the way you act. Do you. you know what I mean? And you're... Leonidas. I'm the Leonidas. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Leonidas. Yeah, great. Then we shall fight you the same. Oh, oh. <laughs> Our arrow is going to block the sky. Then we shall fight it shade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Awesome. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Wicked. What is your profession? <laughs> yeah, that's my thing, you know. I, I am a Spartan. I am a gladiator. I am. Yeah. I am this. Uh, I am the nightmare. I'm the fucking nightmare for Hrgovic and guys like that. Yeah. You know they're like, you know, hey, hey, fuck you, bro. You're not gonna do that to me. I'm not gonna stand. I'm not gonna box with you, bro. It's a fist fight for me. I'm not gonna box with you, yeah. fucking idiot. Now you never, you never looked at nobody in the streets. You don't know. You don't know that part of the world, bro. You don't know nothing. You don't know shit about fighting. Mm-hmm. You're only a good boxer. Only a good boxer is not gonna do nothing in boxing. Tell me one guy who is only a good boxer, but nobody, bro. Nobody. Lomachenko been through so much. Joshua yeah. been through so much. All these boxer kind of guys, they've been through so much. Kirkovic has been through nothing, just boxing. Yeah. Just boxing. And listen, when he entered the gym, he was champion of Croatia that year. And he was champion every year after that. And that is his weakness. That is where I'm going to get him because okay. first fight, uh, first national championship I had, I was fifth out of six. Bro, I was fifth out of six in the small nation. Wow. And he was first. He was European champion after one year of training. After 10 years, I was nobody. You yeah. can't be that, bro. You can't be that. Yeah. I'm going to rip your throat out. You know? <laughs> you, it seems like you've got this this kind of life experience that you feel. And I know what you're saying. You've been a, a tough, tough man all the way throughout your life. And I can't wait to see what you're uh, you're capable of. Now, there's a big, big, big fight that everybody wants to see. It keeps going up and down, left and right, but um, Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury. Now, I've been asked this question by many, many people, but in your opinion, who do you think could win that fight? I think I would put my mind on Fury, actually. Exactly because of the things I'm talking about. The Fury has more life experience than Joshua does. You know, you, Fury almost killed himself. You know that mm-hmm. story. He almost killed himself, so I know that kind of mind because I was close. I was fucking close to just leave it all, you know, just be a fucking drunk or, or go be a monk, go to Tibet. I was close. I was close to go to Brazil and do bare knuckle. I was this close. Really? He didn't, didn't call me, I'll go to Brazil. Yeah. I don't even know nobody. I'll go to fucking favela, bro, because I would do something. I would fight bare knuckle. No, yeah. Fuck you, I have nothing to do here. So I think Tyson Fury has that edge yeah. of life, of hard life. Joshua is the golden boy, you know. He also had a hard life before boxing. I know that. Yeah. I know Joshua. I respect Joshua, but I don't respect him as much as Dylan White and Tyson Fury because Dylan White also comes from that kind of background, and that's why we clicked. No, because I know his story. Yeah. He knows my story, and we respect each other. You yeah, know? especially and I with the for Dylan MMA. White. Thing, I would die for Dylan White. I tell him, brother, cool. if you need, I'll fucking die for you. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what we do. I don't care what we do. If he asks me to do some things, I'm going to do it. I respect that cool. man. You know, I love that man. That's my brother for life. And That's he gave me a chance when nobody wanted to look at me. Nobody wanted to look at me. And he gave me a shot. And That's I so took cool. my shot. You know, I took my shot at life. And I'm here now. That's that's awesome. That that's real. And you know, good on you, Dillian, for for you know, you've got, we've got such an exciting man now in in the heavyweight division, and I'm a massive fan of yours, honestly, uh, Alan. From from you know, man to man, uh, just congratulations for how far you've come so far, and and thank oh, you, thank to, you, for, you know, honestly, you know, man to man, it's it's great to see that you know, even people like you, you know, it's such a great point in your life now. But it just shows that anybody can be be down. I mean, I when I first started did my career in in boxing media, I've done this for thirteen years now. I spoke to the biggest fighters in the world, and I've never believed that I could be in the position I am now. But you've just got to keep going and keep going, and no matter what kind of card you're being dealt. And I've, I'm a massive fan of yours. I can't wait for the guys to you know out there to uh, to see this. And I just want to say you know a huge thank you really for for coming on the show, and uh, we can't wait to see what's next. Thank you, brother. And you are doing a fine job. I didn't follow you before, but I'm going to do now. You and Kuo Cassius are my my favorite because you know how to extract those things in me. I have a yeah. lot of things to say, but everybody just keep asking the same questions. 
Yeah. Oh, how did you get the seven? Oh, fuck you, bro. You how did camp good... go? Uh... <laughs> yeah, how did this go? Are you yeah. gonna beat Benoka? Do you want belts? Fuck belts, bro. I wanna fight. I want you to to speak to me. No, yeah. like I'm a man. I'm not Definitely. fucking Tyson Fury, Josh. I can't talk about belts. I had no belts. <laughs> I don't even have belts for my fucking pants. <laughs> I, I bought one boss belt for fifty euro. I still bash my head because of it. I don't like this stuff. I don't like that. That was that was more money than you left home with, mate. <laughs> Look at you now, bro. Exactly. I have one mate. fucking boss, boss belt. I hate him. I, yeah. I never wear it. I never wear it. I love it. So you keep up. You, you know man. exactly what you're doing. Let's stay in touch. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Will do, brother. Thank you very much for this nice interview. Boom. So- My name's Israel Asif, also known as Izzy, former professional cruiserweight boxer, now the founder of GBM. We at Global Boxing Management are working with promoters locally, nationally and internationally to make sure our fighters are put on the best possible shows. GBM, guiding fighters to the top.